Welcome to Shikani Share Ministries Online. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. Hello, 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 everyone. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Praise be to God. Welcome to the prayer room. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome. I'm just welcome for those who are coming in. Take your time and come on in. Amen. Amen. Let me know where you are watching from. For those who are coming in, take your time and come on in. I will give people some time to come on in. Amen. It's been a while since I've been on the prayer room and it feels like a while, but praise be to God. Hallelujah. It's another Wednesday afternoon in the sunny um, and it's why you can see the lights around me. Amen. Sunny, nothing but not warm, not hot, but sunny, Nottingham. Amen. So my name is Pastor Ricardo. Thank you for joining me tonight, um, this afternoon rather, um, this Wednesday. Um, and you are tuning into uh, the prayer room. Um, this is Shekinah Sher Ministry. Shekinah Sher Ministries was established in 2008 on the, the um, leadership um, direction of the Holy Spirit, inspired, spoke to um, prophets, overseers, and a steward um, to start this ministry in 2008. And so Chicago Show Ministry has been going now, um, hallelujah, for a few years. And we are in the city of Nottingham in the UK, in England. Praise be to God. Um, so alongside you can um, oversee it, Prophet Overseas and Stuart is Apostle Rose Stuart. So both our senior leadership. So we want to give thanks for their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God for Prophet Overseas and Stuart who celebrate our birthday on Monday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we thank God for their lives. Amen. And I'm just going to give you a few more minutes to come on in, everyone. Um, those who are online already, God bless you, Deacon David, always faithful. The Bible says it requires a servant to be faithful, and you always been faithful. Bless, uh, blessings, Minister uh, Kwesi. Blessings, Mother Janet. God bless you. Blessings, um, Prophet Sidani. God bless you. Bless you, everyone that's coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. For, for you tonight. Amen. It's good to see you. Uh, um, I seem, feel like I've not been here, been on here for a while. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Greetings, Orly Vienna. God bless you. Um, I'm so I'm, I think I need to catch my footing back again. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But we we gonna we gonna go on and then for those who are joining us later on will they will come on and join us um, um how has your week been so far i hope it's been well amen hope your well -being week's been well hallelujah um there's so much things going off in the world today and so much um things that's going off around us well thanks be to god for his faithfulness uh, yes kept us another day amen can we just give god thanks somebody for his faithfulness that just kept us another day hallelujah glory be to god somebody say lord i thank you 
Um, if you don't thank him for anything else, say, Lord, I thank you for your saving grace that you have set, kept us and preserved us. Father, we want to give you glory. Father, we want to give you thanks. Father, we want to magnify you and honor you and exalt you. For we recognize, Almighty God, it's not of our own self, nor out of our own strength, nor out of our own might, but it's by your power that we are alive. And we thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to see a new day. The Bible declares, oh God, that morning by morning, new mercies we have experienced. We thank you for today's mercy, that mercy that you have extended towards us. Father, we recognize it's not what we, are, we deserve, but because of your loving kindness towards us, because of your tender mercies, we are here. And because we are here, we recognize that you still have a plan for us. You still have a purpose for us. Your plan, oh God, is not our plans and your ways are not our ways. Your word reminds us as far as the heaven is, so is our, your ways above our ways. And so is your thoughts above our thoughts. And so, Father, we acknowledge your lordship. We acknowledge that you are God, the sovereign one, the everlasting one, the one who reigns supreme and sovereign, the one who is mighty and holy, the one who is righteous. There is none like you. There is none that compares to you. Who can give you counsel? Who can stand before you? No one is able, oh God, to come before you and give you counsel. And so we submit ourselves. The Bible says, oh God, the elders and the angels, they cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They cast their crowns and they bow before you because they recognize that even in heaven, everything is sustained by your power. And so, Father, we humble ourselves to you. We humble our thoughts. We humble our mind. We humble our will. We humble our agenda. We surrender it all to yours. They say, your kingdom come. Your will be done on this hurt. Matter of fact, Father, we say in our life as it is in heaven. Father, we come now for we recognize, oh God, that our hope and our confidence is not in our job. It's not in what we have, but it's in the name of the Lord. Your psalmist says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous shall run into it and they are saved. So we come to run into your presence. We come to glean from you. We come to drink of the water that we will never thirst. Almighty oh, God, we come bless you, oh God. For the psalmist says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. So we come to bless you. So we come to exalt you. So we come to magnify you. So we come to worship you and give glory to you, Lord. And give honor. And give praise. And give adoration. And thanksgiving unto you. Oh, we glorify you, O King. We magnify you, O Lord. We worship you, O Lord. For there is none like you, O God. There is none like you throughout all the hurt. There is none like you. You alone is God. You alone is sovereign. You alone is mighty. You alone is holy. You alone is righteous. You alone is powerful. You alone is worthy. Come on, somebody. Help, help me. Help. Let us exalt him together. Let us magnify him together. Let us worship him together. Come on. Hallelujah. For he's worthy of his praise. He's worthy of all honor. He's worthy, oh God. For the Bible says, praise, wait for thee, O Lord, Lord, in Zion. Come on. Let the redeem of the Lord say, come on, if you have been redeemed, if you've been washed, if you've been cleansed, 
if you've been purged, if you've been sanctified, if you've been, oh God, if you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Come on, let's magnify him together. From the fruit of your lips, open up your mouth just right where you are. Father, we give glory to you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we give you glory, oh God. You alone is worthy. You alone is mighty. You alone is sovereign. Hallelujah. Even if you don't feel like it, just say thank you, Jesus. Even if you don't feel like it, you have you have something to give thanks for. The Bible said that everything that has breath. Praise ye the Lord. So even if you just open up your mouth and say, praise your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name, O God. We magnify you. We adore you. We worship you. We give glory to you. We give honor to you. You alone is faithful. You alone is mighty. You alone is sovereign. You are the resurrection and the light. They said, though we were, you were dead. Yet shall we live. We thank you that we are alive in you, Lord God. And it's in you we find our being. It's in you we live. It's in you we breathe. It's in you we find our being. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah Makadiski. You are Jehovah Tiskin. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Shama. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah what God. You are the mighty one. You are the holy one. You are the sovereign one. You are the everlasting one. Your name is wonderful. Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting King. You are faithful, Lord. And we exalt you today. Come on, somebody, let's exalt him. Come on, let's exalt him together. Hallelujah. The, the good thing about our God is that we don't need to be in the same place physically. Hallelujah. But when we believers, when the believers, when the Bible says when the believers open their mouth in one accord, so spiritually we can be in one accord. When we open our mouth in one accord, hallelujah, crying out to God in one lesson, hallelujah, there's something happens, hallelujah, there's something that takes place, hallelujah, glory be to God, hallelujah, glory be to God, hallelujah, he is worthy, he is wonderful, he is sovereign, he is mighty, he is everlasting, he is wonderful, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Listen, greetings, everyone. Greetings. God bless you. God truly bless you. Hallelujah. God truly blesses you. Amen. God blesses you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to your name, almighty one. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, O King of Kings. Glory be to your name, O Lord of Lords. Glory be to your name, everlasting King. Glory be to your name, everlasting Savior. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Greetings, everyone. For those who are just coming in, God bless you. God bless you real good. Glory be to God. God bless you real good. Hallelujah. You are a blessed man and a blessed woman. The Lord is with you. The Bible says, oh, grace be God. One of the, one of the wonderful stories in the Bible. The Bible let us know that even when Joseph was in, praise be to God, in Egypt, Working on in the house as a slave, hallelujah, serving his master, serving his master as a slave. The Bible says the Lord was with him. He didn't have a house for himself, he didn't have a car, he didn't have a wife, but the Lord was with him. Can somebody just declare the Lord is with me? Hallelujah. Uh, your, your circumstances may not feel like it. But the Bible says, he said, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Just know right now, right where you are, the Lord is with you. Believe it by faith. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. The Lord is with you. Right where you are in that moment, the Bible says his name and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. God with us. Can you imagine the God who created the universe, the one who flung the stars in the sky, the one who rolled out the, uh, the heavens like a carpet, the one who put this moon where it's supposed to be, the one who tell the oh God the ocean, you can only come this far, you can't come any further, the one who said let there be and there was, the one who was all powerful, almighty, is with you right where you are, not only is he with you, he's in you, mighty God. Can we just take a second just to appreciate, amen, how the Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of us, the son of man that you will consider us? God of the universe is with you. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I could show right where you are. Hey, Mama Suto, you could be in driving in your car. You could be living by yourself. God is with you. You could be eating macaroni. You could be eating llama chops. You could be eating spaghetti. You could be eating this rice by yourself. No matter what you eat, God is with you. Glory be to God. You could have nothing to eat. You could have something to eat. You could have nothing to wear. You could have something to wear. God is with you. You could have a power in your bank account. You could have 10,000 in your bank account. God is with you. In other words, your status doesn't count in terms of being God is with you. All that counts is God chooses to be with you. Mighty God. Hallelujah. God, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Lord is with us. Amen and amen. Listen, let me just say a few greetings. Amen. I know you haven't seen my face um, on this platform for a while. Amen. Glory be to God. And I'm so, I take it not likely to be here. It's a privilege, one more time, to be in the prayer room. Hallelujah. And so let me just say some quick hellos. Amen. And I'm going to begin to start. Amen. Let me just and bear with me a while. Let me just say some quick hellos and I will start. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Can I just say a quick hello to um, uh, Shantaya? God bless you. Um, quick hello to um, Sister Charlene. God bless you. Um, uh, Minister Joan. God bless you. Sister Afia. God bless you. Sister Shantaya, I should say. God bless you. Just uh, Mother Eunice, God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, Sister Sasha, God bless you. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Can you just do us a favor and press share? Share, share as much with much people that you can share with. Share with as much people you can share with tonight, amen. Share with as much people you can share with tonight, amen. Glory be to the God that was with us. Hallelujah. I don't know if you feel that right where you are, oh God, but I just feel the, the warmth, the warmth that God is with us. Hallelujah. Oh, well, bless you. In, in moments like this, uh, amen, I wish I had a voice to sing out a song. There used to be a, 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 a chorus. Uh, we don't sing the old songs anymore. We need to bring back the old songs. They have substance. Look at that. Um, there's a chorus I used to sing in, um, in the church. It said, in moments like this, I'll sing out a song. I'll sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like this, I'll lift up my hands. I'll lift up the lands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Glory be to God. And in moments like this, we want to sing out a love song to Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So tonight, amen, if you're joining me tonight, amen. Hallelujah. If you're joining me tonight, thank you for joining us in the prayer room. Hallelujah. We, um, I'm just going to, amen. Let me just get this up. But tonight, the theme for tonight, 
if you see this, it's actually true. That's what we're. What, that's actually what we're doing tonight. We are praying Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. That's all we're doing tonight. Praying Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. This is, after all, the prayer room. And so we come to pray tonight. Amen. Glory be to God. Somebody said, we're going to pray. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Um, but the Bible says we need to pray with understanding. It simply means that when you pray, you need to understand how to pray, what to pray. Amen. So we're going to pray with understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are praying Ephesians 1 and 17 to 19. Amen. If you don't mind, I would just want to get straight into it. Praise be to God. And if you have your Bible, can we just turn to Ephesians just to give us context? Hallelujah. Um, it's just to give us context. Let's read what Ephesians actually say. Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 19. Um, verse 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in a knowledge of him. Verse 18 says, sorry, forgive me. And the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19, and, that, and, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Glory be to God. And so these are... Uh, um, let me add verse 20 just for the sake of it, so we can give context. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seat him at his right hand in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So just for context sake, as we're going to pray, just for context sake, so get yourself ready, get locked in. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. I don't spend, I don't intend to um, be talking very long. Um, and if I'm talking very long, tell me to shut up. Praise be to God. Um, so let's, um, for context sake, just to give us context, verse 17. Verse 17 says um, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you and I this, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So Paul is praying for the Ephesian church. And, in, and Paul is letting the Ephesian church know all of these blessings that they have. And when I say blessings, I don't mean like houses, cars. I mean spiritual blessings. He's it's, it's letting the Ephesian church know all of his spiritual blessings that they have in Christ Jesus. And it started off in verse um, chapter 1, and it goes down. And because of time, we won't go into that. And when we got get to seven, six, um, verse fifteen to fifteen onwards, he says, Paul says, Paul started to um, 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 praise them because of their faith. Paul says, I love how you your faith and how you're faithful in the faith. And so because and so because of how you are in your faith and because you you love the Lord and you love His people, Paul says, I want to pray that you have a deeper revelation of the God, the Jesus that you're calling on, the Jesus that you serve. Because when you and I have a deeper revelation of Jesus, it changes what is our thought pattern, our mindset, and our actions and attitude. When we know who Christ is in our life and who Christ calls us to be, it changes our perception altogether. So Paul is praying that they would know God. That's what Paul is praying. Notice these are believers. These are not unbelievers. These are Christians who've accepted Jesus and accepted the way. He's praying that he knows God. Why? Let's this one. He's praying. So Paul is praying that they know the Father, that God would grant the Ephesian church a spirit of wisdom that they may, but that they sorry, that they would know him um, and to have a deep revelation of him. The deep revelation that Paul is speaking about is not a revelation 
about being a prophetic, um, being prophetic. It's not about a deep revelation, about seeing into people's life. It's not the, the revelation is about calling people and telling them this and telling them that and telling them that they're going to be this. No, that, that's not the deeper revelation. The deep revelation of Paul is calling them to do to be is for them to have a knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is a deep revelation. It's, it's so that our life will be centered around Christ, centered around his purpose, centered around his truth. Centered around his revealed word. Centered around the understanding of who God is. That is what Paul is saying that we as believers need to pray. Watch this. When we pray and come to the revelation of that, we don't need to pray and ask for things. Didn't the Bible say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything shall be added after? The reason why we pray and ask for things, because we don't, the Bible said we we, we Pray and ask a miss because we don't know how to pray. And so we keep on praying the wrong prayer. And Paul is saying as believers, we need to pray that we have a deeper revelation of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, come on, say amen. Let me know no, I'm not here by myself. If you agree, say amen. Hold oh, that my people will know me. For the Bible says my people are destroyed. What? For the lack of knowledge of who God is. That's why he said we're destroyed. Because we don't know him, so we're destroyed. And he says, because you don't know me, I have rejected you and your children. Go back and read the scripture. I am not saying anything that's not the scripture didn't say. Kebonda raba keso toka yasaya. Leduka tayo kosu tayaba. Because whom the son set free is fukone koseto rebae. Is free indeed. Hikaya mondo kosi. Freedom comes by knowing the son. Notice in the Bible, I'm talking too much. Tell me I'm talking too much because I'm just feeling this and we got to pray. Kemunde kiado. In the Bible, everyone who has a revelation of Jesus and come to him based on the revelation of who he is and touch upon the revelation of who he is, receive healing and deliverance. Can I just leave it right there? Think about it. So we're going to pray. <laughs> Glory be to God. And our first prayer point, we're going to pray that God will give us an accurate understanding of who he is and that the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus Christ to us. That's our first prayer point. I told you I'm not going to speak, I'm not going to speak too long, but I feel the Kamayo Kusite Kaba. Because the thought that keep on coming, my people are destroyed <coughs> because of the lack of knowledge of him. Because we don't have the knowledge of him. The woman with the issue of blood had a knowledge of who Jesus is. And she had, the knowledge that she had was so much so that she said, if I could just touch the hem. Oh, God. Okay, let, let me leave that. Let me leave this right there. So we're going to pray. And, and realistically, you don't need to. Uh, uh, um, however you want to pray, that's up to you. But we, this, this is the prayer point we want us to pray together. We want to pray that God will give us an accurate understanding of who he is and, and that the, the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus to us. Hallelujah. Come, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight, almighty God, for allowing us to come here before you. One more time, we come before your throne of grace. Oh God, that we may access grace. The Bible says we may come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may access the grace that's freely open to us through the work that you did at Calvary. The Bible reminds us, Almighty God, when Christ hung his head and died, he said it is finished. 
and the oh God, and the, uh, and the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, which means it gave us access into your throne. Not only does it give us access, Almighty God, but it gives us, oh God, opportunity to come before your throne of grace that we may see mercy and that we may know you. Father, we come before you because your word reminds us that we are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Because we don't know more, know about you, Father God, we are become destroyed. We've become bound, tied up, tied in, tied over, and tied within them. And so, Father, we come that we may know you. We come that we may know your heart. We come that you may give us a revelation of who Jesus is to us and who Jesus is in our lives. We come that the scales we remove from our eyes. The Bible says Saul on his way to Damascus got a revelation of who Jesus was. And when he got the revelation, his life changed and his name changed. Father, we want an encounter with Christ and our own character and nature will change. We ask you, almighty God, give us an encounter with you that we may know you crucified, you resurrected, you exalted. We ask you for an encounter with you, O God, and our very conversation will change. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to give us an accurate understanding of who you are, your holiness, and what it means to follow you. Father, the Bible declares, oh God, even almighty God, the prodigal son, says almighty God, I am not worthy to be called a servant. When I compare almighty God to your holiness, we are not worthy, but you who is holy, call us to your servant. And so God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Open up our eyes of our understanding. Give us an accurate understanding of who you are. That we won't go back to be tied up in religion. And we won't be go back to be tied up in things. And after this world. But transform us by the renewing of our mind. Father we ask you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Oh God we ask you. Open our eyes oh God. Open the eyes of our heart and we may see you. Open the eyes of our heart and we may know you. Father, forgive us. We repent. We repent before you. For every God that we've made you of. For every God we created in our own image. In our own likeness. The God that agrees with our lifestyle. The God that agrees with our behavior. The God that agrees with the things that we do. Forgive us, O oh God. To serve the God of our own image and idea. Father, we ask you now. Give us, O oh God, a clear picture of your holiness and your righteousness that we may serve you and worship the true and living God. We ask you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call, I told you tonight we're coming to pray. Hallelujah. That is the first prayer point. Hallelujah. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That I may know you. That I may know you. Paul said that, that I may know you and, you and you crucified. Paul says, I forget all those things that I've known. Forget all my degree. I forget all of my qualification. I forget all that I've been taught so that I may unlearn those things so that I can relearn who God is. Ha, ah, God, the Bible says, Paul says, when I got saved, when I met Jesus, I, 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 my fact, it says, I did not go around, amen, the apostles. I did not go around the leaders. I went for three years in hyenas by myself. Hallelujah. I'm being taught of who God is, spending time researching, knowing him. Hallelujah. Because he needs an accurate, if he's going to talk about him, if he's going to, if he's going to live for him, he needs to know him for himself. The songwriter said, everybody got to know. Everybody got to know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Everybody got to know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Jesus asked the question. Oh, God, I, I don't want to. See, that's the problem when you. 
uh, uh, let, let's let's go pray. That's a problem we uh, we tend to have. Uh, I tend to have it, and um, I tend to when I'm praying. I'm praying by myself. It's fine, but I tend to go to too much of t teaching, preaching. But let's let, let let me see if I can stay in this way. Verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Let's turn up to verse eighteen for our second prayer point. And verse eighteen says. And the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. But our eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Hallelujah. If, if our eyes, if, our, if, if we are to know God and to know Jesus, it will take a supernatural work. It will require our eyes, spiritual eyes, to be open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I may see you. Come on, stop it. Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Someone declared, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Enlighten my eyes that I may see you. It will take uh, the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened by God so that we will see God. It will take the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm going to go to uh, the second, well, our second prayer point, our second prayer point, praise be to God. We're going to pray and ask God to open our eyes so that we may, uh, so that we may see him for who, uh, for who he is. Open our spiritual eyes, not our physical eyes, but our spiritual eyes. You know the story in Ephesians. The Bible talks about uh, Elisha, Elisha, who as a servant. And one morning the servant got up early. And when he got up, he got scared because he recognized that the enemy that um, came and circled their tent. And he got scared. And he said, uh, la, 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 la. I don't know, I'm just making it up. He cried unto his master, Elijah. And the Bible said, Elijah came, but Elijah had a different disposition, a different stance. Because when Elijah came out, even though he saw what the servant saw, he saw something that the servant didn't see. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. I'm really trying not to preach. I'm really trying not to do I'm to go into all that because there's so much things. Um, but he, 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 he saw what the servant saw. And what he saw was there were horses encamped them with sword drawn. The enemy surrounded them. But Elijah also saw something else. And in order for him, and it's, it's one thing to tell the servant, Oh, it's okay. God, God got us. You know, sometimes you know you try to encourage someone that you know it's okay. It, uh, God is going to make a way. But if I don't see see it, it's hard for me to have the the, the courage and 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 the, the faith because I don't see it. And so Elijah recognize Elisha, sorry, recognize that in order for him to have the the stance or disposition that I have. He has to see what I see. And so Elijah says, God, I don't need you to defeat the enemy. I need you to allow my servant, his eyes to be open. Not his physical eyes, because his physical his eyes is open. But I want him to see beyond what his physical eyes see. I want him to see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody need to say, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual eyes that I may see beyond what my circumstances present to me. And oftentimes we make decisions based on what our circumstances present to us, not knowing that God has already made a, a, a provision. But because we cannot see the provision, we, sub, we submit to the circumstances. So the Bible says that Elisha prayed and asked 
God to open it up, Gehazi's eyes that he may see. And the Bible says when he when Elijah prayed and Gehazi's eyes was open, he saw the enemy, but he also saw angels surrounding the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Um, um, for the last couple months in Shikana Shua ministry, um, this has been our anthem. This has, has been our anthem. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And so oftentimes it may look like you are in a rock and hard places, but really God is in that place. And so the Bible says when he prayed and asked him to open his eyes, he saw angels around. So now he's no longer scared. Now, Lord, now he can stand in boldness because he knows that there are more for him and for against him. We want to pray. We're going to pray and ask God to open up our eyes. Open up our spiritual eyes that we may see Jesus. Open up our spiritual eyes that we may see him in every aspect of our life. Open our spiritual eyes that we may see his handprint on our lives. Open our spiritual eyes that we may see his handprint in our daily walk. Father, in the name of Jesus, we recognize, oh God, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And Father, we recognize that oftentimes we miss you. Oh God, Jacob says, oh God, surely the Lord was in this place and we did not even know it. And so Father, so there are times that you are with us. There are times that you're working around us. There are times that you are present, but because we are so focused on the circumstances, we don't see your handprint. We don't see, oh God, the print of your presence amongst us. So we pray, almighty God, and our spiritual eyes will be open that we may see you in our daily life. We pray that our spiritual eyes will be open, that we may know you, and you, oh God, exalted, and we may see you for who you are, and we may see you for who you are, oh God. We pray, oh Father God, that you remove every scales from off our eyes, and we may see clearly your glory, your power, your majesty, your wisdom. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Open our eyes that we may see you, Koteshaya, clearly as you as Elijah prayer for Gehazi and his eyes was open. We pray, Almighty God. The Bible says Jesus prayer for the man of God who was born blind. And when he prayed, the Bible said Jesus opened us said, Do you what can you see? And he says, I can see some things, but I see them blur, for I see man as palm tree. It means that our his sight need be corrected. So Father, correct our spiritual sight that we may see you, that we may accurately know how to navigate our life in this world full of darkness, in this world full of perversion, in this world full of wickedness. Oh God, help us to see you, that we may know how to move among unbelievers, that we may see, oh God, the wolf in sheep closing, and we may see the principalities that's coming against our family, and we may see the wickedness and the things that we're about to buy, and we may see the evil that's lurking around the corner and we may see the angels that you have assigned to our home father open our eyes that we may see in the spirit open our spiritual eyes and we may see beyond the natural father we ask you in the name of jesus we pray come on hallelujah somebody said lord open my eyes open my eyes open my spiritual eyes that I may see you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Open my spiritual eyes that I may see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before we get into the third prayer point, the third prayer point, Paul is using an expression when he says, open our, our eyes. He's literally saying, open my understanding. 
open my understanding. He said, too many Christians' heart have, have no, too many of us, our heart has no eyes. We can't see because it's darkened. We, we don't have no real knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is. And so therefore, we walk groping, the Bible says we walk uh, uh, groping, the, groping the day. Even though it is day, we still walk as it's night because our eyes have no enlightenment. The eyes of our heart has no light in it. Hallelujah. The, the word uh, heart in scripture signified the life center of our, the, the core and the center of our life. It means that Paul wants us to know this, that our, in order for us to secure our hope in Christ, in order for us simply to know God and to know who he is and to know Jesus and is calling over on our life, we, our eyes, have to be open. Notice what Paul says. Let me let me go back to the scriptures. Notice what Paul says. He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling. God has a calling upon your life. Yes, you, you, you that's watching, you, you, you that's sitting there. God, as a, you're not just called, amen, to, uh, to sit at a job. You're not just called to be a mother. You're not just called to be a wife. Yes, that's important. And God, God has given you the grace to do it. But there's a greater calling that God has upon your life. And, and, and it's not sometimes, watch this, and sometimes we, we, we want someone to lay hands upon us and tell us, oh God, this is what God called for. No, but if we would just spend time and seek his face and ask him, God, what is your calling upon my life so I can be sure and walk in it? What is your calling? The Bible says, that, 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 it says that we may know what is a hope. So when we have, when we know the calling that was upon our life, it gives us hope. It allows us to function. And the reason why a lot of us end up in hopeless situation because we don't know what, what we're called to do. We, we don't know what we have, our purpose is in the kingdom. And somebody said, God, what is my purpose in the kingdom? And my answer to you, ask the Lord. For it is him who has the calling. It is him that gave it to you. Not no man. And so when someone lay hands upon you, it should be a confirmation of what God is already speaking to you about. Amen, somebody? And so Paul is saying, God has called us for a specific calling for us to fulfill. And the hope of the calling is that we give us perspective for our future. When we have a hope of the calling that we have, that God put on our life, it gives us a perspective for our future. It allows us to know how we need to maneuver our life or how we need to maneuver our life in this world. When we know what we're supposed to do, we, it allows us to order our life in accordance. And the reason why a lot of us end up in circumstances and situations is because we don't know what is God's purpose for our life. We don't know what is God's calling. We don't know. And my favorite author and writer, he says it like this, where, where purpose is not known, abuse is eminent. When you don't know the purpose in which what uh, in purpose for what your life, you abuse your life. And how many of us has abused our life in our lifespan? We've done things, we got into a situation that we shouldn't have got into, we made a mess of it over and over because we did not know our purpose. I'm sure uh, let me lift my hands up. If that's you, come on, we're gonna pray. We're gonna ask the Lord. We're going to pray. This is our third prayer point. We're going to pray and ask the Lord, what is your calling in our lives? Lord, reveal to me your calling on my life. Can we say, oh Lord, reveal to me your calling 
on my life. Oh Lord, reveal to me your calling on my life. Oh Lord, I wanna know why you saved me. Show me why you saved me in your kingdom. Show me why you have me here. Show me why you allow me to go through what I've gone through. Oh Lord, open my eyes to your calling on my life. I know what they said I should do. I know what they've spoken over my life. But oh Lord, open my eyes. The Bible says when Jesus called the apostles and then he told them you're an apostle. Uh, when he called up the disciples and he made them apostle, uh, they wasn't confused because Jesus told them who they are. You are an apostle. Hallelujah. They wasn't confused. And, and, as, and as soon as the, uh, the Holy Ghost came, they, they, they wasn't hanging around. They went. They just went. Their life changed because they know who they are, and now they have the Holy Ghost to do the, to do what they're called to do. They went. I pray tonight that the Lord of glory, sorry, the Lord of glory will reveal to you and I the calling that he has upon our life. That he, whether in a dream, God, I pray. Whether, oh God, to his word or whether he speaks to us, Father, we ask you tonight that we will make a mess of our life no more. God, we don't run, we will run down other things, other, other things, I run down after people, I run after prophecy, I run after a ministry. But Father, we want you to reveal to us, oh God, the hope of the calling that you place upon us. The Bible says to those you've called, you've sanctified, those you've sanctified, you've justified, and those you've justified, you glorify. So we pray, Almighty God, that you reveal to us the hope in which you've called us. And the purpose to which you have called us, that we may know you, Lord God. That we may serve you. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, reveal to us the reason why you've called us. And the purpose in which why you've called us. Reveal to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let, let's move quickly because time is going. Hallelujah. Time is going. Glory be to God. And so we're going to get into verse. Um, and it's the fourth thing, the fourth prayer point we, we want to pray. The fourth prayer point we want to pray. Praise be to God. The fourth prayer point we want to pray. We want to pray and ask God to reveal what is his, what what are the spiritual inheritance He has for us? What are the spiritual? In, God has some spiritual inheritance for you and me. I'm not talking about houses or cars. No, the Bible says that we have spiritual inheritance in Christ Jesus. We are oh God. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. With Christ Jesus, we have we are we have spiritual inheritance. Okay, so to Rabasa, Ikemosa. Paul wants us to know what is the greatest uh, of God's inheritance in His people. We usually think only of our inheritance in God, but God, um, Paul wants us to understand that uh, we are precious to God. And he consider him consider us as his personal inheritance. We are God's personal inheritance in the hurt. God, God, how God. Mm. Mm -hmm. God, that's so good. You are God's inheritance in the hurt. Inheritance speaks of treasure. You are God's treasure in the earth. You are here to remind people how powerful and how mighty your God is. Ah, oh, God. Your life should remind your family 
you and our life should remind people around us and point to who God is. Okay, 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 okay. I hear you. What do you mean? I hear you. The Bible says God chose Israel. And when God chose Israel, the Bible says when God defend Israel and, and defeat Israel's enemies, what happened? The neighbors around now got scared of Israel because of their God. Because they know that the Israel God is the most powerful God. And so they can become scared of Israel because of their God. So Israel in the herd remind the pagan nation that there's a God that's powerful than yours. So Israel become God's inheritance in the herd. My God. So God. Can we just make this declaration? I am God's inheritance in my community. I am God's inheritance in my family. I am God's inheritance in my, what do I mean? You are there to show them how you are there. Your life is to show them how powerful your God is. So we're going to pray. God. Father, we are asking you in this next moment to reveal to us, oh God, what is the spiritual inheritance that we have in you. We pray to open our eyes to see our position uh, in you, almighty God. We pray to help us to see ourselves and who you are in us and the work that you've started in us. The Bible said, oh God, the, um, you that started a good work in us is faithful and just to accomplish it. Father, we pray, oh God, in our eyes of our understanding uh, that it will be enlightened, uh, that we may know the hope in which you have called me. Call us, oh God, and that we will see, oh God, our suffer through your eyes. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Father, that you will help us, oh God, let the man around us, uh, let our co-workers, uh, let our family know, uh, reveal your glory to them through us. Reveal your glory to them in us, Father, that, they, that, that the fear of the Lord will come over them. We pray, Almighty God, as you call us, Almighty God, open our eyes, oh God, that they will see, that they will know, that they will understand what is a spiritual inheritance that they have and we have in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray tonight that our eyes will be opened, that they will see, Almighty God, what is a spiritual holiness and spiritual truth that you've imparted in us that you've poured out in us that we may know you Lord Father we cry out to you in the name of Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah Glory be to God Hallelujah Are you still with me tonight? Hallelujah I don't know how many of you are still with me Are you still following me? Are you still here, my kasha total bokasha. Are you still here? Let me just read um, this passage of scripture uh, um, um, before I, I came online tonight. Um, the Lord remind me of this passage of scripture, and I want you to and I want to read it to you because it's important and it's found in Second Corinthians four. I want to ke maso to kubase tede ke maso bokoshe. This is this this is now God is not calling you to feel good. God is call, God now in this season wants to reveal Himself to you. He wants to reveal Himself to you and I. Because He says, if you seek me, you will find me. And if you call upon me, I will answer. Because those who know their God will do exploit in this season. Hear the word of the Lord. Takonde kibaso jatayo kozatai lele kundoro ba kasite kadokoso ikama koto shoto kosite kama. 
Hey God, he calls so by. Hallelujah. For some trust in chariot and some trust in horses, but those who trust in the name of the Lord shall be like a strong tower. Ikaya sotoko. Ibaako soto robokasa. Ike no romo shaya. Ike ma soto. Yamaya koso. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. We exalt you, Father. For you are faithful, you are holy, you are righteous. God, we ask you to open our eyes of our understanding. That we may know you. Give us a fresh revelation of who you are. Remove the scales from our eyes that we may see you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. We give you praise and adoration to you. There is none like you, O Most High God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to read this to you because my time is far spent. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. And it says, but, but we have this treasure in earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen what he says. But you and I have this treasure in earthen vessel, vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You have a treasure, and the treasure that you have is Jesus Christ as in this vessel. And the power of God will be a display. It's not, it's not going to be your power, but it's God's power. Hallelujah. It's God's power. Makota shatai. Bikura bakasoto lirekesete kodabaso. Can we just take a moment as to worship the King of Kings? Just before we go, can we just take a moment as to magnify the Lord of Lords? Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. Father, we give you praise. Father, we exalt you. There is none like you, Father. There is none compares to you, Father. You are the great I am that I am. You are my all in all. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the bright morning star. You are the lily of the valley. You alone is holy. You alone is righteous. You are good and faithful. And there is none like you, Lord. We give honor. We give praise to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Just before we go, amen. I want you to remind you, praise be to God. Hallelujah. There's so much thing I want to pray, but my time is far spent. I want to remind you about our notices. Hallelujah. Our notices, amen. And this coming this coming Sunday is our evangelistic service. And I want you, if you're coming to church, bring someone with you. Don't come by yourself. Bring someone with you. Ask a cousin, ask a neighbor that you know that um, um, could, de could, ne uh, could, could uh, hear the word of the Lord and, and be in, um, and be in, and be uh, invited and express it to Jesus. Ask them to come. Bring them into the house of the Lord. The postcode is online. We're inviting you. Please, if you can't come, come in the house of the Lord this coming Sunday. It's our evangelistic service. And because of our evangelistic service, we want to pray for salvation. Father, we ask you, almighty God, for those who will be watching tonight, watching later on, watching tomorrow, for those, oh God, who are just um, logging in, Father, by chance, we pray, oh God, that by your Holy Spirit, that you draw their hearts, reveal Jesus Christ to them, I open their eyes to the, to the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. Remove the scales of darkness from their eyes. We ask you to save Almighty God. We pray for our family members. We pray for our cousins, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, even mothers and fathers who have not yet come to you. We ask you, Almighty God, that you deliver them from the darkness as this world. 
deliver them to worship you in spirit and truth. We speak to every Pharaoh, hear the word of the Lord, loose our family members, loose our cousins, our nieces, our nephews, our brothers, our sisters, our children, loose them that they may come and serve you. We ask you, Almighty God, that you will draw them to the foot of the cross. We ask you, Almighty God, that you will deliver them from all evil. We ask you, Almighty God, that salvation will come upon their lives today. We ask that you will meet our families, deliver them from every evil that presents itself. And Father, we give you thanks. And Father, we are mindful to you to give you all, you all the glory <coughs> and all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for saving our families. We thank you for saving people to this weekend. We thank you for those who are coming for the first time in your house. We thank you for saving souls. We thank you for saving our families. We thank you for saving our cousins, aunties, grandmothers, grandparents. We thank you for saving them, oh God. We thank you for your salvation and your joy in the sickle. We thank you, almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And for those who are online, if you're watching today, tomorrow, later, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior, I want to give you opportunity now. Now is a time for salvation. The Bible declares, Jesus says in 2 Peter chapter 3, don't count the slackness as mine count the slackness of the coming of the Lord, as, it, as, as though he is tired or is, is wasting time. He says, it's long suffering towards us that all will repent. He says, in the day of past, we believe that God, we believe that God has destroyed the herd with water. But this time he won't destroy with the herd with water, but with fire. And if we know that the fire will come and destroy the herd, what type of life should we live? The Bible declares, oh my, that he that have the son has life. And he that does not have the son does not have life. Sorry. If you need life today, life is in Jesus Christ. The Bible said Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. No man enter the Father but through him. For it's appointed unto man once to die, and after death come judgment. What will you say? If you were to die today, where will you spend eternity? Hallelujah. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and to lose your soul? What is the cost of your soul? Ask yourself this. If you were to die today, where would you end up? I'm sure you would like into a, end up in a place where the Bible said there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, for God will wipe the tears away. And the only way you can be in that place unless you accept Jesus Christ in your heart. How do you accept? You got to believe that God, that God sent his son into the world, born of a virgin. And he walked this earth for 33 and a half years. And he died for your sin. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin, that he may redeem who we who are sinful. Even while we are yet still sinners, Christ died for us. What is your response tonight? Would you say yes to him? Would you say, I want Jesus Christ in my heart? For behold, he stand at your door knocking. If any man hear his voice and open up his heart, he will come and live with you, sit with you. Would you say yes to Jesus Christ tonight? Would you open up your life to him? Will you say, I've spent my life and I've made a mess of this life? I've made a mess. I've tried my best, but I've made a mess of it. Now, Lord Jesus, here is my life. I turn it over to you. Would you do that tonight? If your answer is yes, then simply we're inviting you to pray this prayer. So, Lord, Lord Jesus, I confess I have a, I'm a sinner. I don't deserve your grace. I've sinned against you. I've broken your laws. I've done so many wrongs. But I know I cannot make heaven unless I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. So tonight I come to repent of my sins. I repent of my transgression. I'm asking you to forgive me for all the sins I've sinned against you. I invite you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Satan, I renounce you. I'm no longer yours. So Lord Jesus, be my God tonight. 
Deliver me from sin and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may spend the rest of my life living for you. From this day forward, I no longer belong to the world. I belong to you. So come into my life and save me that I may live it for, for you in this hurt and eternity when I die. I thank you and thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you've just prayed a prayer, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his solely begotten son to die for you. Who else would die for you? Nobody. Who else would lay down their life? Nobody. But God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son that died on the cross for you. May you have a blessed day, a blessed night. May you have a blessed week. And hopefully I can see you in the house of the Lord on Sunday. And join us again next week, Wednesday, for another session of the prayer room. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Take care. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you.